Hey everybody, it's Tara Michelle, AKA Opinionated Sense. And today I am bringing you a review of Good Girl Supreme, which is the newest installment in the famed Good Girl line from the house of Carolina Herrera. Okay, let's start off by giving you the notes according to Fragrantica. The top notes are forest fruits and Egyptian jasmine. The mid is tuberose and tonka bean and the base is vetiver. I saw one video that described this fragrance before I purchased it. And I immediately purchased it because I had no idea that it was coming out. And the way that it was described um, is not <laughs> what I get from this fragrance at all. Um, I was told that it was a berry fragrance and it was pretty much the original good girl with berries. I love the original Good Girl. I am a super fan, an absolute fanatic. I love it. It's one of my highest complimented perfumes, my most complimented perfumes. This scent is not that. This is definitely my least favorite of the three. I love the, the bottles. This glitter stiletto is amazing. It's beautiful and I'm a collector, so I appreciate having it on my shelf next to the original bottle as well as the bottle for Legere which is my favorite by the way. Legere is a good scent. I really do like it. However, I don't think I'll repurchase it because nothing is better than the original in my opinion. As for this scent, the opening, I'm going to assume that forest fruits is what is making this perfume not really blend well for me because I don't recall ever seeing that note in any of my other fragrances. But this opens up extremely medicinal. I'm going to tell you when I first sprayed this and the first four times I sprayed it, I've worn this a full wear three times and tested it on my hand and my arm a separate two times because I am trying to, to get to the point to where I can at least tolerate or appreciate this. So in the opening on first spray, I got cherry Robitussin and iodine. Like super medicinal, 1920s hospital, iodine and, cher and cherry tussin. Like I, it was so overwhelming that I had to get up and just like walk around. Um, it turned my stomach, if I'm being honest. Now, I don't get it that bad anymore now that I've tried it five or six times. So um, it's palatable, but it's still, not, I just do not like the opening. And that medicinal cherry Robitussin stays into the mid and even into the dry down. It's at its lightest in the dry down, but it's still there. Oh, and let me not forget amoxicillin or penicillin. That old, I'm an 80s baby, that old school penicillin, not the bubble gum stuff they came out with us as, for us as kids. Old school penicillin like pills, iodine, and cherry Robitussin. That was the opening. So now as I spray it, I still get the Tussin, not so much the harsh medicinal element, but definitely Cherry Robitussin. I cannot say that enough because it's so potent and prevalent. And the mid is the same. Now for me, I just don't think the Forest Fruits and the Egyptian Jasmine like each other very much. They seem to be fighting um, over that top note spot. The tuberose in here also peeks through and is bitter and harsh. And I think it's because they chose to use the tuberose similar to um, the Gracious Tuberose by Gucci Flora. That green, petal, leafy tuberose. And I love that because I love a green scent. But it does not blend well with the forest fruits and the Egyptian jasmine in this perfume to me just my opinion, at all, on any level, ever, okay? And I'll tell you what would make this scent probably magnificent. If they would have used the bubblegummy tuberose that appears in Armani's My Way, in Crystal Gardenia by KKW, or in Mansara's Velvet Vanilla, that candied bubblegum tuberose, probably would blow this out of the water. 
Um, I think that if they reformulate it, they should go that route. That's just my personal suggestion. Maybe somebody from their crew will see this video one day and they can take care of that. The dry down, you get more of the tonka bean and the lightness of the vetiver. This is not a heavy vetiver at all. And then I think the forest fruits get a chance to shine just a little bit because the Egyptian jasmine and the tuberose taper off. However, this is not a safe blind by 100%. Definitely get a sample or if it's safe enough in your area, get to a store and get your nose on this one. I am looking for suggestions on how to make this better. So if you are watching this and you love this scent or if you didn't like it that much either and you've paired it with something else, whether it be another perfume or a lotion or a body mist, even though I'm not a fan of layering, because I want this bottle in my collection and because I, for whatever weird reason, really want to make this work for me, I would love any suggestions you have. Now, I went out and purchased Japanese Cherry Blossom by Bath & Body Works. And it does take the bite off of that medicinal harsh cherry tussin, but not enough for me. I like something else to just calm that opening down so I can get through to the dry down, which I actually do enjoy. So if you love this, I wanna hear about it in the comments. You know how we do. If you don't like it either, I want to hear about it in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, definitely leave those in the comments. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending your time with me. Please consider uh, uh, subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Talk to you guys later.